Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Quit pinching that child. Well, first of all, welcome. I'm glad you all are here this morning. Um, <clears throat> let me give you, go through a couple of quick things. First of all, Alden next week is going to begin teaching a new Sunday school class called Family Foundations, and it'll meet downstairs. So if you are interested in um, just giving, giving that class a, a try, then please know that starts next week. <clears throat> I will go ahead and let you know that we are not um, going to have any evening services tonight. We'll stay in and stay warm. Uh, the mile of pennies this week or this month is to support the food pantry. So we're trying to do a food drive also. So just want to uh, encourage you to bring groceries um, for the food pantry. Also, um, next Sunday we're going to have a baby dedication. And um, just, we're, she, she probably needs our prayers, right? Um, but if you haven't signed up, if you're wanting your child or a grandchild to participate, I have some forms right here on the front row for you to fill out. Um, and we need those in ASAP. So uh, don't put this off. Uh, we're going to have it next Sunday during the 1030 service. So um, those are the, the basic announcements. Um, I, I'm glad you all are, are here. Now I know who can brave the weather and who can't. Um, but... Uh, we're, we're here to worship. You know, nothing changes because the weather is not always cooperative. Uh, we're here to worship. And I, I want to encourage you to remember that because God is spirit, our worship comes from the spirit, not from our mouths. When we worship, it's, it's happening in here, not here. And so you can quite literally worship and never open your mouth, but you can sing or, or mouth things and not worship. So make sure that your worship is, is originating from a, a heart, a place of gratitude, and that you are just expressing joy to, to Christ for who He is. So let's go to Him in prayer, and then uh, let, let's worship. Lord Jesus, we are here to honor you today, to worship you, to glorify you. And I thank you for the individuals that are here this morning. And Lord, I just, I give you, give you praise. Um, we want to celebrate you and to uh, just spend some time this morning stopping our lives and focusing solely on you. May you be glorified by our worship today. And it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Hey, glad to have you all here. Let's go ahead and stand and worship. And if you're worshiping with us online, I invite you to go ahead and sing with us as well.
Father, we just thank you so much. We know that you are our God, you are our sovereign, you are our Lord. And Father, you provide for everything, and you are there. You are always there with us. Father, we just thank you for everything that you do for us. Father, as we go into this time of worship in, in Scripture, and Father, just speak to us. Father, and give us the words that you have us. And Father, we ask you to be with the, the children that go to Children's Church and help them to learn and to encounter you. Thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in Children's Church. You are dismissed. Life isn't easy. We all have moments of struggle, hopelessness, and despair. The day-to-day -day can begin to take its toll. And before we know it, we're consumed, overwhelmed by stress, surrounded by fear, unable to see the light through the darkness. It's no wonder we lose our joy and forget what peace actually feels like. But there is a way, a way for hope to break through our walls, a way for our faith to be renewed, a way for comfort to surround us. We can once again feel the light shine brightly on our face. We can experience the warmth of God's love and watch the darkness be overcome, for it's in the light of Jesus we find peace. Well, this is our second Sunday in this um, this series that I'm wanting us to go through where we look at the 23rd Psalm. And if you'll remember last week, um, we looked at the very first verse of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And just kind of a, a quick summary of that, when we understand the Lord is speaking about God, when, when we understand that we're, we're talking about Jehovah, the, the God of the universe, and that He, in the, in the person of Jesus Christ, is our shepherd, then we can have absolute rest knowing God is in control. Uh, you know, that, that God, God will tackle any issue that we have. We, we need not worry. Uh, and so, uh, with that as the first, the first verse and the key to understanding the rest of the 23rd Psalm, what I want to do today is look at the second verse, and the, the topic is going to be how to deal with stress. Um, now, I, as I told the folks in the, the first service, um, all four of them, no, there, there was actually more than four but, um, you know, if, I, I know you all don't have any stress in your lives, but maybe you can take this and help somebody else. So, um, you know, the, the Bible has given us what we need to live lives that are not stressed and, and you know, to be stress-free. And, and the word that the Bible uses Peace is shalom, and that, that is a, a sense of being completely at rest, to be completely calm, uh, no matter what's going on around us. And so, 
the first thing that we need to understand in, when we look at um, he makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. Okay, the, what we have to understand is we are God's sheep. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, developing what that means, but we need to understand this. Uh, Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Now, the reason that we are stressed is because we are like sheep, and we are taking on things that we don't need to be taking on. Now, let's, let's understand what does it mean when the Bible refers to us as sheep? Well, let's, let's start right at the very, the, the very point. Sheep are dumb, okay? Um, now, I know that as human beings, we are intelligent, we are gifted, we are artistic, we're graceful, we are, we are a beautiful creation made by God. But we are also quite dumb. Now, uh, you, you're saying, oh, we're not dumb, you know, I, I'm educated, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. But the reality is, is we will work ourselves to death. We will ignore the people that we claim to love. We will ignore health concerns when we have them. We will eat ourselves till we are sick. And, you know, these are just a few examples that show that, like sheep, we're not very smart. And spiritually speaking, we are also pretty dumb. People are, you know, we as, as human beings are spiritually really um, about as, as goofy as we can possibly be. People will go out of their way to believe stupid, ridiculous things rather than believe the truth. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 23 that people will strain at a gnat but they'll swallow a camel. And he's using a, a kind of a, a poetic way of saying, we'll swallow the dumbest things and then we'll, we'll gag on something that, that should be pretty easy to, to understand. Romans 1.20, Paul says it this way, Ever since the world was created, it has been possible to see the qualities of God that are not seen. I'm talking about His eternal power and about the fact that He is God. Those things can be seen in what He has made, so people have no excuse for what they do. We as sheep really have one responsibility, and that is to pay attention to the shepherd and leave the heavy thinking to Him. Now, we don't do that, and this is where we, we get into to trouble. Now, again, let's think about sheep. Sheep are dumb, and they are also defenseless. Sheep are not known for their ferocity, okay? Um, you know, most animals have some sort of defense mechanism. They're able to run away from danger, or they're able to turn and fight, or, you know, a skunk does what a skunk does. Sheep don't have any kind of defense. They just die. That, that's what sheep do. They die. They're not fast. They don't have particularly good eyesight. They don't hear especially well. They're defenseless. And <clears throat> now as humans, we may think that we're some kind of rough, tough, bad dudes, you know. Oh, oh man, I, I could take on... But... We're not, you know, let, let's be honest, we're, we're not that tough. And especially when we look at things from a spiritual level, we are not tough at all. 
And remember, and I'm going to try and hammer this a little bit during this message, God is concerned about the spiritual much more than the physical. You know, God is spirit. Everything about how we relate to God is on a spiritual level. And so when we are compared to sheep, we're looking at this from a spiritual level. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, 5, our sufficiency is from God. You and I are not sufficient. We don't have the ability, spiritually speaking, to do much of anything. And we are incapable of spiritual strength or spiritual power. It comes from the shepherd. Sheep are also directionless, all right? Isaiah 53, 6, we like sheep have gone astray. Sheep get lost, but they are so dumb, they don't even know they're lost. And that's, that, that pretty well describes human beings. You know, a sheep will will go along and they're, they're eating grass and they're eating grass and they're eating grass and they're eating grass and all of a sudden they'll look up and go, huh, where, where did everybody go? Oh well, and then they'll go back to eating grass and they don't even realize that they've wandered off and that they're now lost. It takes the shepherd to come and find them and bring them back because they're so dumb, they don't get it. They just go on doing what sheep do, eating grass. And so, um, you know, they, they wind up somewhere, and they don't know where they are, but they don't care because they don't think about things like that. And isn't that exactly what humans do? We go on about our business, and we're not paying attention to what matters we're just doing our thing and we'll look up and go, huh, wow, my life really stinks. Oh well, and we'll just go right back to doing what we're doing. I remember, you know, we all remember the old hymn, Come Thou Fount of Blessing. And in there it says, Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the face of God Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Take my heart, O oh, take and seal it with thy spirit from above. We tend to wander away from God. And that's why we need a shepherd to steer us, to guide us, to lead us, to keep us focused. Now think about it. You can leave cattle out in a field they're all right. You can leave a horse out in the pasture. It's okay. You cannot leave sheep unattended because they'll die. That's what sheep do. Sheep need a shepherd because they're dumb, they're defenseless, and they have no direction whatsoever. So this message is about how to handle stress and the reason you and I are stressed is because we are trying to live and function outside the boundaries of what we're supposed to be doing. Again, going back to Psalm 23, verse 1, which we dealt with last week, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, verse 2, which we're looking at, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now, there are several things that kind of counter what we like sheep are when we look at who our shepherd is. The first thing is, is he gives us security. He makes me. He leads me. Remember, again, our shepherd is the Lord, the God of the universe, Jehovah. Yahweh, he is the shepherd. And this is speaking of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. 
The shepherd gives security to the sheep. You know, the, the sheep don't even know they need security, but the shepherd gives them security. They need the shepherd, whether they realize it or not. And because we have a good shepherd, we have security. Well, you say, how? How do we have security in this shepherd? Well, remember over in Hebrews 13, 5, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, it says, He himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. We always have a shepherd watching over us. We're never on our own. We never get left unattended. And as again, as we talked about last week, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, that's, that's pretty impressive. A shepherd that is willing to sacrifice himself for the good of the sheep. So the first thing is, is the shepherd gives us security. The second thing is, our shepherd is compassionate. He cares about us. Remember what it said about Jesus in chapter 9 of Matthew, verse 36? But when he, speaking of Jesus, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Notice that word compassion. That means that he was moved in his spirit. He was moved. There was a stirring in his heart. It hurts Jesus to see people struggling and suffering and, and lacking purpose and direction in their lives. You know, do you want to understand what moved Jesus to leave heaven and come to earth? It was his compassion for us. You know, here, this is what this is saying. His compassion for lost sheep is, is what moved Jesus. And, and when we think of the word compassion, it means that you hurt with someone who is suffering. And that, that describes what Jesus is, is for us. Now, he's compassionate he's, and he's also caring. When you think of Jesus, you know, we think of him giving us security, and we think of him being compassion, compassionate, but he also cares about us. In Isaiah 40, verse 11, it says, He will feed his flock like, like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. That's a beautiful picture of what our shepherd does for us. You know, be glad that the God of the universe cares enough about you that he holds you tenderly in his arms and, and holds you close to himself. He, he cares that deeply. I remember the, the, the poem about the, the footprints in the sand. Do you all remember that poem? I'm not going to take the time to read it, but... The whole idea is this guy has this dream and as he's going through life, he's walking side by side with God. And when he looks back, there are periods of time and he notices that it's in those periods of time that he was going through the greatest difficulty, there's only one set of footprints. And he says to God, God, why did you leave me during those, those most desperate times? There's only one set of footprints. And God says, no, I didn't leave you, knothead. I carried you. You know, what, during those, those periods of, of greatest difficulty, there's only one set of footprints because I was carrying you. That's our shepherd. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 11, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So he cares about us. And he's also brave. He's, he's courageous. He, he cares for us, and he's brave. 
I read um, from John 10 just a little bit ago, and I spent a lot of time on it last week. But it's in John 10 where Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. And in verse 11 of John 10, he says, The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And then in verse 17 and 18, he says, Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again, or take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Now, understand, there are wild animals that are constantly trying to get to the sheep. There are predators. Well, the same is true of us, certainly spiritually speaking. There are spiritual predators out there who are are ready to attack. But because our good shepherd laid down his life on the cross, we are protected. We are under the, the protection of the God of the universe. Now, understand, this, being a sheep is not real high up. You know, when, when people are picking mascots, they don't usually pick sheep. You know, that, that's not real high up on the, on the, the scale. So it, there, there's not a, a sense of, ooh, yeah, I'm a sheep. Oh, you know, that's, that's not the way we are. But there's no shame in being a sheep. We just need to understand it. It's the reality of who we are. But we have a shepherd who is looking out for us. Here's the point. In order to deal with stress, we need to understand, we need to embrace, we need to accept, we are sheep, spiritually speaking, all right? We are weak, we are defenseless, and we're not very smart. And if that offends you, take it up with God, all right? Um, I, that's what the Bible clearly teaches, But our shepherd, Jesus, is looking out for us. And we don't need to worry. He provides our security. He provides compassion for us. He is caring. He is courageous. It says he makes me. He leads me. So... If we want to have less stress in our lives, what we need to do is say, God, I recognize I'm a sheep. And rather than me trying to set the agenda, rather than me trying to do the heavy thinking, my responsibility is to be obedient to you. That's a sheep's job, to follow the shepherd, not to think for himself. I know that that's not, that goes against our, our society and the way that the world wants us to approach things. But this is what the Bible is showing us. And when we do that, He will meet our needs. He will meet us with abundance. Notice it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now, those of you who have never spent any time in an arid place in the desert, you don't really fully grasp or appreciate what is being communicated here. Green grass and water are not just an automatic. Those sort of things don't just happen in a desert environment. Now, If you're stressed in your life, I'm going to guess that most of the stuff that we are stressed over tie to having our needs met. But Jesus here is saying, I'm going to take care of you. If you will follow me, I will take care of your needs. Jesus said it very clearly in Matthew 6. Don't worry. Don't say, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? 
people who are ungodly run after all of those things. Your Father who is in heaven knows that you need them, but, and here it is, put God's kingdom first. Do what He wants you to do. Then all of those things will also be given to you. We read a verse like that and we go, yeah, uh -huh, sure. And then what do we do? Like sheep, we just keep on nibbling and we keep on nibbling and we keep on nibbling. And before long, we look up and we go, huh, I don't know where I am. Oh, well. And then we keep on going. That is describing us when we are not following God. You know, we, we we're lost and we don't even know it. We're just chasing after whatever is in front of us. How many people wake up every day and they just go through the day? They get up and they have this to be done. And then at the end of the day, they're tired and they go to bed and they wake up the next day and this is what they do. And then they wake up the next day and this is what they do. And one day they wake up and they're old and that was life. That's the way most people live because they're not following the shepherd. They're doing whatever is in front of them. God knows your needs. He understands that. And so what he's saying is, quit just doing what's in front of you and begin to live a life that is intentional, that has purpose, that has direction, where you're following the shepherd because he knows what's best. You don't. This is such an important verse for us to, to get a hold of. Let me say something. As Americans, we are gluttons. And I'm not just talking about food. We are food gluttons also. Absolutely, yes. But we are gluttons for stuff. Materialism. That is our God. If, there, if America has a true God, it's materialism. We pursue stuff. And as a result, we will drive ourselves nuts. We will drive ourselves sick just pursuing whatever's in front of us. Our lifestyles as Americans fly in the face of everything that the Bible teaches. And, and please understand, me too, I, we are all guilty of this. I think one day we're going to be judged by God because he's going to say, I blessed you with so much, and what did you do with it? You used it for yourselves. You kept it. You didn't do anything for me. You didn't do anything to, to show that you cared about me. You took everything I blessed you with and just kept it to yourselves. We need to understand when it talks about green grass and still waters, God is saying, I will give you everything you got to have. Quit worrying about that and instead focus on what I want for you. I'm the shepherd. I am the God of the universe. Pay attention to me first and I'll take care of everything. This is a step of faith. This is what this really is about, is faith. Are we going to believe God or are we going to believe the lie of this world? In Psalm 22, verse 26, it says, The humble will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise Him. May your hearts live forever. Think about this. God is spirit, okay? Everything that God is supremely concerned about 
is spiritual. When Jesus taught, when he was teaching his parables, he would talk here on a superficial level. He would talk about everyday things that people understood. But he wasn't really talking about that. He was talking about spiritual issues up here. We need to understand that. That's why Jesus would say, for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. You know, what he's saying is, are you, are you getting what I'm laying down here? I'm not talking about guys finding treasures and I'm not f- talking about seeds being planted. I'm talking about spiritual matters. Are you understanding that? Well, this is true in the 23rd Psalm. In the 23rd Psalm, when we talk about green grass and water, he's not talking about green grass and water. He's talking about God's sheep. And what do sheep feed on? Green grass. So if we are God's spiritual sheep, the sheep of his pasture, what is it that we are to be feeding on? The word of God. This is what green grass is talking about. God is, you know, he is communicating to us as my spiritual sheep, I'm going to lead you into pastures of green grass, spiritually speaking, the word of God. Feed on this, grow fat on the word of God, grazing on this pasture full of food. And then when we come to deep wells of water, he's not talking about water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, the water of God's Holy Spirit. Here's the point. You and I are to find our satisfaction. We are to find our contentment in him and nothing else. If you are looking at anything, anything other than Jesus Christ for contentment, then you are worshiping an idol. You are practicing idolatry. Jesus Christ and nothing else. We're stressed because we're trying to fill our deepest needs with something other than Jesus. When you feel like, well, if I just had this, if I could just attain that, if I could just reach this level, if I could just, it, whatever, what we're doing is we're saying, Jesus isn't meeting my needs. I'm, I'm, I'm nibbling grass and I'm going after whatever's right here in front of me. And I'm looking around saying, I have no idea where I am, but I'm going to keep feeding on this. And we're missing the whole point. Jesus said in Matthew 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be satisfied. My question for you this morning is, what are you hungry for? What is it that you're chomping at? Is it righteousness? Is it Jesus Christ? Is it the word of God? Or is it something else? Well, if you want peace, and that's what not having stress in your life is, it's peace, right? Right? A person who, who is stressed doesn't have peace. A person who has peace isn't stressed. We have a good shepherd, and in him we have security, we have abundance, and we have peace. Here's the thing. Sheep will eat, and when they're content, they lay down. And when they lay down, that's actually when the real work takes place. Sheep are ruminators, which means they have two stomachs. And so when they have eaten, they lay down and they bring up their cud and they chew it. 
and they process it. And it becomes nutrition to them when they have gone through this process. Now, too often, if you, know, if you have sheep that are never allowed to relax, they never lay down, they become sick and they die because that's what sheep do. And when we don't ever stop and take in the word of God and ruminate on it, work it over, process it, meditate on it, then we aren't ever going to grow healthy. We're never going to be at peace. We're never going to become strong and vigorous the way we're supposed to. We're going to be these sick, weakly, frail, miserable creatures. And quite honestly, isn't that what most of us as Christians are? So we need to spend time chewing our cud. And I, you know, again, I'm talking spiritual. I'm not talking, you know, tangible. Take time to be quiet with God. Don't stay at home and watch TV or play on your your electronics. Get quiet with God. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. In Isaiah 30, it says, you will find peace and rest when you turn away from your sins and depend on me. You will receive the strength you need when you stay calm and trust in me. Am I saying that when you choose watching TV over spending time with God that you're sinning? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. Again, our TVs, our electronics are our gods. We, there are actually now genuine, legitimate um, medical conditions that people experience when they can't have access to their stupid cell phones. That's a sickness. And because we are dumb sheep, we are susceptible to that. Is God, the God of the universe, worth your time? Do you want to be free from stress? Then develop an appetite for the word of God. Sit down, be quiet with God, and let him comfort you and give you peace. You know, imagine again, if you have sheep and all you do is drive them, all you do is push them, they're never allowed to relax, never allowed to rest. You know what's going to happen? They're going to die. And every time, you know, when we feed on the word of God and we drink from the well of the Holy Spirit, and then we begin to chew on the word of God, meditate on it, we will become strong and healthy and happy. Psalm 1, verse 2, Happy is he who loves the Lord's teachings. He thinks about those teachings day and night. We're spiritual sheep. We need to ruminate, meditate on the Word of God. How do you deal with stress? You feed on the Word of God. You get quiet and you drink from the well of the Holy Spirit. And you spend time meditating deeply in the word of God. You have a shepherd that loves you. He he wants good for you, not bad. But you have to trust him. You have to follow him and go his way. If he's constantly having to drag you back to the fold and every time he drags you back, you begin to wander off again, you're you're defeating the purpose. I've had limited but some experience with sheep and I swear they will drive you nuts because you can have a gate open as mile wide and there will always be one or two 
that will do anything and everything but go through the gate. They want to they want to jump over the fence, well, they can't. And they want to run through the fence, well, they can't. Or they want to run the opposite direction. They're, they're just, there's these obstinate sheep that are going to do what they're going to do. Don't be that kind of sheep. Be the sheep that always is obedient, always follows. If you are stressed in your life, Become obedient to who God is and what He wants for you. Feed on the green grass of the Word of God. Meditate on it. Drink deeply from the well of the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, your stress will go away. And you'll begin to know peace that you don't have. Let's pray. I would ask that you, in the quietness before the Lord, ask yourself honestly, is the Lord truly your shepherd? Have you committed to following Him, obeying Him? And if you, if you can honestly say, yes, I, yes, that is my desire, my heart's desire is to be obedient and follow Jesus, then right now, before the Lord, resolve to feed on the green grass. He will lead you there. He will cause you to lie down. And He will feed you and let you drink deeply. But if you're sitting here and you're saying, no, I, I really... I'm not, I'm not one of those sheep that have ever followed the, the shepherd. Then that's where you have to begin by committing your life and saying, I recognize that Jesus is my good shepherd and that I will follow him. I resolve here and now before God to commit my life to him. My prayer for each of us is that we will understand the key to happiness in life, the key to peace in life is found in the shepherd. Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts right now. You know each one of us perfectly and you know what we need to hear from you. And so, Lord, I pray that you will speak to the hearts of each and every one of us right now and let us hear the message you have for us and help us to be obedient to follow you. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. As the invitation is given, respond to Christ. Do what he is calling you to do. Please stand. Lord Jesus, again, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And may this be about you and you only. Help us, Father, to be faithful and follow you. Even when we don't make sense of it, help us to be obedient to you.